Hi, my name is Dr. Jacqueline Harris, and I am a neurologist at Kennedy Krieger and Johns Hopkins, who does a lot of work in epigenetic conditions like Wiedemann Steiner. Hi, I'm uh, Rowena Ng. I'm a pediatric neuropsychologist at Kenny Krieger Institute, and I do a lot of um, neurocognitive testing and research with genetic syndromes, including Wiedemann Steiner syndrome. So, we're going to talk to you today a little bit about the neurodevelopmental features and clinical features of Wiedemann Steiner syndrome and the research that we have been doing and continue to do. So Wiedemann-Steiner syndrome is caused by a loss of one copy of the KMT2A gene. It is an epigenetic disorder. And like most of the epigenetic disorders, it causes a number of features in different organ systems. Some patients have many of these features, some have fewer, some have some, and some have the other. However, one thing that we see very, very consistently in all patients with Wiedemann-Steiner syndrome is some sort of neurodevelopmental disability. Most commonly we see some combination of global developmental delay and intellectual disability, but until recently that hasn't been much further defined. So I will go over briefly on some of the studies that we've conducted with the support, financial support and grant support from um, the Wiedemann Steiner uh, Syndrome Foundation, um, specifically going over kind of neurocognition and early findings on neural behavior uh, profiles in uh, WSS. Um, in a case series study that we looked at around 10 patients with molecular confirmed um, diagnoses of Wiedemann Steiner syndrome, we generally saw a few patterns. One is that we see verbal skills are generally stronger than nonverbal skills, visual motor or visual construction skills, and spatial processing. Um, raising has, um, some hypotheses and uh, predictions about possible kind of differential brain development that is impacted by um, the, uh, the genetic mutation. And second, we see that there is also a greater rates of executive functioning and attention difficulties, raising concerns of potential kind of clinical diagnoses like ADHD or attention deficit disorder, um, but also that its impact of particular in day-to-day -day life with behaviors. Um, and then third, we also see generally a uh, stronger um, basic reading skills than math skills. Math skills seem generally more universally affected in children with WSS, uh, meaning that it's much harder to learn over time. And generally, math skills are um, associated with spatial um, development or spatial processing development. And so again, we see these kind of similar patterns suggestive of specific uh, brain ranges that might be affected in WSS. Um, neurobehaviorally, we also see a very unusual social phenotype in those with WSS, um, specifically that they generally show um, very high show strong motivation or social drive, like interest in interacting with other people and pro-social behaviors, but in the context of significant high frequency of restricted and repetitive behaviors, meaning that someone who might be more rigid or having more routine focused and having difficulties with transition, transitions and um, adapting to new situations, new um, um, tasks, et cetera. Um, we also see generally a high elevated um, number of individuals endorsing anxiety, both from what parents are reporting and both self-reports of individuals with WSS in children and adults. So about 30% um, or a third to um, uh, of our sample with um, individuals with WSS, their parents are reporting clinical levels of anxiety and over two thirds of our sample of, of children and adults with WSS self-report um, clinical levels of anxiety as well, raising kind of concerns and considerations for us, think, um, how we should manage care for um, anxiety, um, particularly early on in uh, development for these individuals. Um, so those are just kind of very brief preliminary findings that we have done um, um, for studies in the past year supported by WSS Foundation. We're still conducting many more because there's still much more to learn about WSS. Um, uh, we are doing some neural uh, biological kind of um, st studies to look at um, uh, kind of for brain activity and response to different kind of stimuli. Again, this is non-invasive where, um, where you're really just wearing a cap and this is done in person. And then we're also doing a cognitive study where we're looking at more 
more in-depth um, cognition kind of thinking abilities in individuals with WSS. Um, this is in person, and there's also options to do this uh, via virtually or um, te via telehealth online. So if there's any interest for research um, or questions about uh, research participation, um, feel free to contact me here um, or email me, and we can discuss different kind of research options that's best fit for your family's needs. Okay. And we just also want to acknowledge support from our WSS Foundation, um, IDDRC, um, NIH, and also our collaborators, Dr. Farner and Dr. Bjornsson, um, for all the research support here.